Hello. I hope everyone is doing well. I wanted to uh, share something with you. Destiny by Evelyn Scott. I am lost in the vast cave of night, no sound but the far-off tinkle of stars, and the cry of a bird muffled in shadows. The light flows in remotely through the hollow moon, dim, strange brilliance from waters beyond the sky, groping. I listen to the harsh tinkle of the far-off stars feel the clammy shadows about my shoulders. Evelyn Scott, Destiny. I want to tell you a story. It's a story you probably have heard. You probably know this story. But I'm going to tell it to you a bit differently. Genesis 34, the defiling of Dinah. Now Dinah, the daughter of Leah, the daughter Leah had borne to Jacob, went out to visit the daughters of the land. When Shechem, son of Hamor the Hivite, who was the prince of the region, saw her, this Shechem, saw her. He took her and lay with her by force. He raped her. Different translations say. And his soul was drawn to Dinah, the daughter of Jacob. He loved the young girl and spoke to her tenderly. So Shechem told his father Hamor, the Hivite, the Hittite, get me this girl as a wife. Now Jacob heard that Shechem had defiled his daughter Dinah, but since his sons were with his livestock in the field, he remained silent about it until they returned. Meanwhile, Shechem's father, Hamor, came to speak with Jacob. When Jacob's sons heard what had happened, they returned from the field. They were filled with grief and fury because Shechem had committed an outrage in Israel by lying with Jacob's daughter, a thing that should not be done But Hamor said to them, My son Shechem longs for your daughter. Please give her to him as a wife. Intermarry with us. Give us your daughters and take our daughters for yourselves. You may settle among us and the land will be open to you. Live here. Move about freely and acquire your own property. Then Shechem said to Dinah's father and brothers, Grant me this favor. I will give you whatever you ask. Demand a high dowry and an expensive gift, and I will give you whatever you ask. Only give me the girl as my wife. The story continues. But because Shechem had defiled their sister Dinah, Jacob's sons answered him and his father Hamor deceitfully. deceitfully. We cannot do such a thing, they said. To give our sister to an uncircumcised man would be a disgrace to us. We will consent to this on one condition, that you become circumcised like us, every one of your males. Then we will give you our daughters and take your daughters for ourselves. 
We will dwell among you and become one people. But if you will not agree to be circumcised, then we will take our sister and go. Their offer seemed good to Hamor and his son Shechem. The young man who was the most respected of all of his father's household did not hesitate to fulfill this request because he was delighted with Jacob's daughter. So Hamor and his son Shechem went to the gate of their city and addressed the men. These men are at peace with us. Let them live and trade in our land. Intermarry. But only if we agree to be circumcised as they are. Will not their livestock, their possessions, and all their animals become ours? Only let us consent to them, and they will dwell among us. All the men who went to the city gate listened to Hamor and his son Shechem, and every male of the city was circumcised. Three days later, Sorry about that. Three days later, while they were still in pain, two of Jacob's sons, Dinah's brothers, Simeon and Levi, took their swords, went into the unsuspecting city, and slaughtered every male. They killed Hamor, his son Shechem, took Dinah out of Shechem's house, and went away. Jacob's other sons came upon the slaughter and looted the city. Because their sister had been defiled, they took all their flocks, herds, donkeys, everything else in the city of the field. They carried off all their possessions. Women, children, plundered everything. Then Jacob said to Simeon and Levi, You have brought trouble upon me by making me repugnant to the Canaanites and the Perizzites, the people of this land. We are few in number. If they unite against me and attack me, I and my household will be destroyed. But Simeon and Levi answered, Should we have treated our sister like a prostitute? <clears throat> First off, if you've ever read the Bible, you know this story. Hamor, if you put the C in front of the H, is Chamor. And that word Chamor is the word used all the way through the Old Testament for a male donkey. And it means red one. It means red one. It's a question that linguists and etymologists have tripped over for thousands of years, why would they call donkeys red when donkeys in the Levant aren't red? They're brown or black. And why would they assign that red color to the masculine male donkey? It's from a verb, hamar, to begin to flow slowly. Now Shechem is interesting. The root is unknown, but it yields one extant noun and a verb derived from the noun. See, it's a back formation. They usually start with uh, verbs and then create nouns. But this one was a noun and then they created the verb. The masculine noun Shechem means shoulder, or sometimes, as in Samuel and Psalms, the whole back. The verb Shechem means to rise early or to make an early start. The noun and verb have to do with each other is open to conjecture. Yeah. BDB, Theological Dictionary, Brown's Driver Beggs, 
Briggs Morning Camp, uh, got their theory, the Haw Theological Workbook, Word Book, Diligence, Persistence of the Riser, Getting a Good Start on the Day, Jordan Peterson would call it conscientiousness. We at a barum here think it means dawn, meaning to seek diligently. It seems to us that prior to the culture of slavery, a person's burden was a thing that the person voluntarily devoted to. That means the shoulder was not merely the seat of whatever life threw at the person, but rather the seat of the person's own attentions and concerns. The prophet Isaiah states that Eliakim, who was King Hezekiah's chief housekeeper, would become a father to the house of Judah by saying that the key to the house of David would be on his shoulders. In the Isaiah, he predicts the birth of the Messiah and the government will rest on his shoulder. Well, there's definitely a link there to... Uh, the book of Revelations, isn't there? But we're not going to go there today. Simeon, in Hebrew, is the same name as Simon, in the Greek. He who hears. What does he hear? We've done that last video. He hears the word, he hears the tones. He who hears. And Levi means coiled or joined. It means coiled or joined. Kundalini in the Sanskrit is she who is coiled. The serpent power, primordial cosmic energy. It awakens each successive chakra. Hmm. Yeah. Now, Hamor, the red one, when you go into the Hindu astrology, their fourth lunar mansion, the red one, the name of Aldebaran, also known as Brahmi. Hmm. is Brahmi. Just food for thought there. Just food for thought. Aldebaran. Derived from the Arabic, al-debaran, meaning follower, from debar, meaning to turn one's back. Now, what's interesting about this, this is the Arabic. In the Hebrew, its sister language, debar means word, W-O-R-D, or message or to speak, to say, to talk. That DBR is also the root of uh, Deborah, 
which means B, B double E. And you're going to hear me talk about bees until it's coming out of your ears in days to come. Bees and wasps, wasp or hornets, bees and hornets and uh, beetles and locusts and, uh, oh yeah, mantises. It's a very buggy place. The apocryphal book of Enoch describes Aldebaran as a fallen angel who attempted to seduce an Assyrian queen in the form of a bull. Well, that's not the way the Greeks told it. Europa, a virgin, after dreaming of a struggle between two continents for the possession of her, was carried off among her companions by Zeus, who was always Zeus, in the form of a bull, and born across the sea from Tyre to Crete, there to become his bride. Yeah. <clears throat> Tyre and the shores of Sidon, all... All uh, references to Orion. Now, Zeus was the king of the gods, right? We know this. Describes three of Zeus's mortal liaisons. Danae, who was impregnated by the god in the form of a golden shower. And that's not your German style, three, two girls, one cup golden shower. And that's not what they're talking about. They're talking about the golden liquid light. Antiope, who was seduced by the god in the guise of a satyr, and Callisto, who was deceived by Zeus, disguised as the maiden Artemis, or Diana. No, we're not going to bother with those guys. Enoch, the apocryphal book of Enoch. Everybody's got somebody they can't stand. Some don't like Peter. I don't blame them. Some don't like Paul. Don't blame them either. Personally, I don't like Enoch. Because I know exactly who the son of a bitch is. Inaugurated and trained. Yeah, inaugurates one way to put it. Another way to put it. Dedicated, disciplined, dedicated, dedicated. I'll leave links for these sites. Initiated. That's a better way to put it. initiated. You pretty much have to get up into the age of like Irenaeus. Post that, you know, first, second century AD to where you actually see some writing by people who are not initiates of the mystery schools. Now, there's nothing wrong with being an initi initi initiator, initiated <clears throat> into a mystery school. Hell, Jerome was. You know, the guy that gave us Lucifer, the Satan that never existed. I watched Jeffrey Doherty do a pretty good takedown on that. Um, there's a couple things I want to add to that later, but first things first. The initiated Enoch. Did it ever occur to these people that beat the Enoch drum? John D. and Kelly and their seances and their dark, what kind of magic were they doing? Dark Enochian magic. They were looking for the, uh, the original alphabet. They were looking for the alphabet. They wanted to do uh, 
angel magic. But frankly, they ended up having to do a wife swapping thing. If you dig into it, you start to read up on it. Yeah, that's the sin of the Nicolaitans, you know, was that wife swapping business. They passed their wives around like party favors to prove that, you know, they were beyond human things like lust, they didn't care. And, you know, that's the story you get with Nicolai, the Nicolaitans, Nicolaitans. That's the gloss they tell us. That's the story they give us. The truth is they were passing her around. They were passing a feminine entity around. We'll just put it that way. Paul said, don't be too quick with laying on of the hands and sharing someone else's sin. See? And pass that memory back and forth. Pass that feminine being back and forth. This place isn't what we think it is and it does not operate by the rules that we think it does. Now, Leah was weary. That's what they'll all tell you it means. Leah means weary. From the verb, wearied or grieved. It means wild cow, weak-eyed. A wild cow and weak-eyed. And Shechem means shoulder, doesn't it? Shechem means shoulder. Aldebaran, the follower. The name, the bright one of the follower. Let's go. Too many, too many open and too many. Yeah. Oh. Enoch. Just an organized bunch of liars, all of them. Uh, let's go to Firefox. Yeah. There we go. The shoulder. There it is. Beetlejuice. In the Arabian. The giant Orion. There were giants in the earth in those days. They're tracing board giants. Okay. So you're told that there was a whole lot of raping going on. In point of fact, In the book of Judges, the Levite 
had his wife raped to death by a bunch of Benjamites. And she died with her hands on the threshold. That Hebrew word threshold is soft. It's not spelled the same, but it is pronounced the same. And it's in the pronunciation. It's in the, uh, the speech, the vibration, the tones we create with our voices. Yeah, Rachel here. Rachel means you. So it would mean Eve, wouldn't it? Excuse me a second. Sorry about that. So Rachel means you, breeder sheep, or Eve, we know from our linguistic studies. She had Joseph, the son of many colors. She had Benjamin. Leah gave birth to Dinah. There's my artistic <laughs> calligraphy there. She had Reuben and Simeon and Levi, Judah, Issachar, and Zebulon. Uh, Zebulon, he's a piece of work too. And Dinah. Rachel, which means you. She had Benjamin. Bilhah, which means terror, trouble, calamity, faltering, confused, or bashful. Dan and Naphtali. You know, she initially named Benjamin. Ben-Oni. B-E-N hyphen O-N-I. And it means son of my sorrow. She died giving birth to him. She wasn't even cold. And Jacob renamed him Benjamin, son of the right hand. Hmm. So Benjamin, the son of the right hand, of the fixed cross, Simeon and Levi, coiled and joined, initiates of various levels of the mystery schools. Well, Jacob had to say about them, they're brothers. Their sir, the swords or words are weapons of violence. May I never enter their council. May I never join their assembly. For they kill men in their anger. They hamstring oxen on a whim. Cursed be their anger, strong, wrath, cruel. I will disperse them. What the initiate did here in Gemini was they killed a man and lamed an ox. What they actually killed was Shechem. They killed the whole village. They went in and they killed everybody. Castor and Pollux, Gemini. Dioscuri in the Latin, which means Zeus's boys. Zeus is Jupiter. He would be tin. And they stole the copper right the hell out of 
Taurus. Now, Dinah means judged in Hebrew. Judge, judgment. The name Dinah is the feminine form of the name Dan. The Apocryphal Book of Enoch. You know, in Daniel, Dan, you know, we had watchers. By the time Enoch and these Zadokian clowns were done rewriting things, they were all a bunch of fallen demons and satanic bastards. You know, I've learned over the years that if this place tells you things are one way, If this construct, for instance, told me that water was wet, the sky was blue, and grass was green, I would insist on going out to look for myself. That's how bad it is. Do you remember Shoemaker Levy? That comet that exploded when it crashed into Jupiter. Oh, that oh-so-beneficent Jupiter that uh, protects us. from all these space horrors, you know. Well, a shoemaker makes shoes, and they cover your feet, which are your understanding, and Levi means coiled and joined. People have no idea the depth of the deception that goes on here, the depth of the interrelationship of things. And the fact, the fact... And this is the wildest part, and I will talk about this. I will commit Ham's sin, and I will show you why it was never Ham's sin, why that was another fucking lie. How everything is text-based. As Levetta said, the Pharaoh said, let it be written, let it be done. In the Etruscan, the sentiment was put... As it is written in the sacred scroll, so shall it be. It's text-based. And these scribes knew this. Dioscuri, Castor, and Pollux. Take a look at the name of the boat Paul got on one time there in the New Testament when he's sailing around. Do a little etymological study on all those names he drops. Greet this one and that one and the church that meets at their house and blah, blah, blah. Try and read. If you're going to, if you're going to read these books, understand what you're being told. It's not in the surface text. Now, Let's go talk about Jezebel. Jezebel is the same name as Isabel. This is a behind the name site, and it's a good site. But the real learning is like always, you know, go to the comments. Here in Israel, the names Isabel and Jezebel are pronounced identically and are considered to be one name, Isabel. Origin identical, lexical break, potential original form, 
Elizabeth, Elizabeth, Bell being either the Babylonian god, the source of the name El, as in the Hebrew word for God, names like Michael, but also Lord, hence the Lord God, could mean follower or assistance. Same. So the follower. Aldebaran is Jezebel. But it's also Rohini, isn't it? It's also Rohini, the red one. So is it masculine or feminine? See, they're trying to have it both ways. Maybe it is both. Maybe it's androgynous. So Castor and Pollux, Dioscuri, Zeus's boys, you would know them from Christ's disciples under the name of James and Joseph, Jacob and Joseph, he who shall increase and the deceiver, the, the supplanter, the second man. They were the sons of Zebedee. You remember their mother, their mother, Zeus's <coughs> wife, Hera. Was, yeah, and Jupiter had Jove. Yeah, so Zeus's wife, Hera, the the triple goddess, she's a tripartite feminine. She asked Christ if her boys could sit on either side of him. Say Aquarius. She wanted her boys to sit here and here. And he said, you've got no idea what you're asking. It's not mine to give. Mary, you know, they're all Marys. Mary means myrrh and Mary means rebellion. See, it's built into the language. Mary means rebellion, 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 rebellion. Why? Because, well, the flesh and this world is feminine because it's magnetism. We did that the last video. It's an overgeneralization, but it is what it is. And it's got to do with the coaxial nature of light, the coaxial nature of DNA, just the way things operate here. Now, maybe, maybe at some point in the distant past, uh, the father thought he lost control of this place and he had to rewrite the program. I don't know. I don't know. I do know that the feminine is incredibly beyond description powerful. And I will go into that in another video. It's already getting too long, this one. So the story of Jezebel and Ahab. Ahab was a weak king, a weak masculine, who wanted a vineyard that was not his. And his wife, who was a strong, witchy woman, got it, and, and a dark prophetess got it for him, right? And then she got her comeuppance at the end. That's the story. What is going on here is the son of the right hand. You know, we're looking up and through here now. We're not looking down on the top. You'd be looking at Christ's back lying on the cross. Aquarius to Leo at his feet. John. Yeah, Mary, here's your son. Your son, here's your mother. And then on his left hand would be desire, Scorpio, feminine water. Right hand, Taurus. What we had here was a weak masculine that wanted a vineyard that was not his. This weak masculine was here. And these initiates lamed an ox here in Taurus. How did they do this? Simeon heard. Levi was joined. 
That's what the Levitical priesthood is about. When Christ raises Talitha, he becomes a Levite. He becomes a priest. But when he is crowned by the dove, by the collective feminine, then he becomes um, the God-man. And these guys here used this knowledge, this understanding of the construct we live in and its text-based nature. Let it be written. Let it be done. And by taking control of the narrative at a fundamental religious belief level, what you believe, you create. That's the fundamental truth of this place. That's the fundamental truth of this place. I believe is the coin of the realm in the age of Pisces. Pisces is I believe. Aquarius is I know. Capricorn is I do or I use. Sagittarius is I, I see, I perceive. Scorpio is I desire. Libra is I balance. Virgo is I analyze. Leo, what was Leo? I forget. I forget. Taurus is I will. Well, see, they were a weak masculine, and they stole it. They did it with dark magic. They did it with sacrifice, these bulls and these bees. You've got, that's a whole other story, and I'll go into that. The connection between bulls and bees, and horses and hornets, and different animals and different insects, and how this all meshes together. This is a very buggy program, I'm telling you. Bugs everywhere. What do you think Cicada 3301 came from? The, the bees belong to the day, and the night is coming, Christ said, and that belongs to the cicadas. Why do you think they popped up all of a sudden? So it's all interconnected. It all works together. But what we've got here is a weak masculine, and you're given that in the public eye. Hell, they, they told you that in uh, Wizard of Oz. If I only had a heart, if I only had a brain, if I only had some courage. The masculine has been shattered here. When Simeon and Levi, when Castor and Pollux went in and they killed Orion, and they continued to rape Dinah. You know, Benjamin, the son of my sorrow, she named him. The son of the right hand, Jacob called him. Well, I always ask myself about things that don't add up. Things that just logically do not follow. Non sequiturs, things that don't match. If Dan is this big turd that needs to be flushed, and we know this because, well, it's in all the books, isn't it? It's been written down over and over again, isn't it? as we move across time and across places. And a whole bunch of scribes have written this. And we know that the victors write the history books, don't we? And we know that they always tell the truth, don't we? That B, Emperor Napoleon, I think put it best, he said history is a lie agreed upon. But Dan has this reputation of moving across and naming everything after himself, yes? This is what he does. He's an egomaniac, and that's what he does. And yet the feminine form of that name was the rape victim. She's still being raped to this day. So, in England, the owner and possessor, the England, the NG, go back two videos and watch that one, um, where they have the annual Gog and Magog parade. You know, the belly of the financial beast, the uh, heart, the beating heart of the hydra, of monstrosity of this world beast system that we live in. You know, where they have this parade every year, Gog and Magog. Hell, they're proud of it. He was a giant, by the way. He was a giant. 
So, you know, here at the heart of this beast system, what's the name of that big clock? Laying claim to time and Saturn itself. It's not Big Dan. For when they speak the lie, they speak of themselves. You know, a lot of people have tracked Dan West out of the Levant. Not a lot of people track him east. I have. And the story that gets repeated in the Japanese and the Chinese is uh, leader, good leader, good kingdoms, overthrown, aeons changed. In the Japan, Japanese, they dived off a cliff in true, you know, heroic seppuku fashion rather than be captured by men. And uh, there's some crustacean at the base of this cliff in this one bay it's the only place they live that has the kanji the the name for dan on their back now don't get me wrong i'm not saying dan's not a pill on dan's not an issue most definitely is um dan and benjamin ended up in bed together um and that g one of the things it stands for is generation the female generative knowledge and the incredible power of the feminine. And uh, that power is, is mental, it is spiritual, it is physical. It's all of those things. And like I say, I'll do a, a video on that. But um, that G also stands for Geonim. How does that spell? G-E-O... What? Um... And that is a twisted druidic hybrid solar lunar cult, which, you know, is basically what you've got with uh, old school uh, Zadokian Zadokim Judaism, um, with a lot of Jupiter worship thrown in there. You know, it, it was all mobbed up with the astrology in uh, Babylon, and they were interested in more power, and they were interested in keeping the power for themselves. And, uh, yeah, yeah, it ain't pretty. None of it's pretty. And I'll do a lot more to show you where they lied, how it wasn't Ham's sin to begin with. And if I could find, there's one smoking gun I found years ago and I didn't save and I'm looking desperately for it. If it still exists, you know, after these Mandela shows, who knows? But uh, that would explain the whole, the whole uh, Ashkenaz, um, Mount Horeb, Mount Sinai thing. Anyway, why am I doing this? Not because I want to. Christ talking to the apostles. The kingdom of heaven is like a net. It was cast into the sea and caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the men pulled it ashore, and they sorted them. So it will be at the end of the age, right now. Understand, he's talking about right now, the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. What is the fiery furnace? It's this place. It means you have to go around again. And you will go around and around and around, as Goddard put it, until you change your habits. Have you understood all these things? Yes, they answered. Then he told them, 
For this reason, every scribe who has been discipled in the kingdom of heaven is like a homeowner who brings out of his storeroom new treasures as well as old. That's why I'm doing it. I'd much rather just sit on my ass and not change my habits at all. But that's the job. Everybody's handpicked for a job. This one's mine. <sighs> Not how I saw things going, I'll tell you that. Anyway, be good to one another. Be kind, be loving, be forgiving. You've got to figure. You've got to figure this out. This is a play. This is a program. This is various states of consciousness. You and I are absolutely certain that the mug we shave or the the face we put makeup on, which in this day and age may be the same mug, but uh, we're convinced that we're real. We're convinced that we exist. We're convinced that we are absolutely 100% free agents, and we have complete and total free will. And we have no idea who and what we really are. We're here to learn lessons in an illusion, in a, a lie. But there are different kinds of lies and there are different reasons for lying. Some lies are noble lies. And some lies are damnable lies. So, be good to one another and be forgiving. You're going to find in the end the hardest person you'll ever have to forgive will be yourself. And it's a hard pill to swallow. There's nothing easy about any of this. The end of the age is here. So, try not to be a dick. We'll talk again soon. Let's see if I can figure this thing out again. I always have trouble with it. Bye now.